going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Yes, I am back after an exciting... Someone here says uh, vacation. I guess I was sort of on vacation, but it was a working vacation. And man, look at me. I'm tired. Eh, whatever. Hey, we got a lot to get into here today because I desperately try to wake up. Been watching New Japan. Watched Filthy Tom and uh, and Yuji Nagata. Holy smokes. And I was in the middle of the Suzuki Ishii match when I had to uh, I had to do this show. So we'll uh, review as much as we can on the Filthy Tom Lawler show coming up at 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. But today we'll get into all of the news. Tonight, of course, is Monday Night Raw. And uh, you know how it goes with this Raw show. They've announced a bunch of stuff. We'll find out what actually airs. We've got uh, allegedly two championship matches. Unless, of course, somebody ends up in protocol at the last second. We have got a lie detector test, and we have got a uh, a double wedding. Two weddings going on at the same time. So I'll give you the lineup for that show tonight. We've got the update on Ring of Honor on Sinclair. Ring of Honor on Sinclair is no more. They, uh, they're they done. And so uh, we'll see if this coming Wednesday on the AEW show, we'll see if the big announcement by Tony Khan has to do with streaming, because one would think that maybe it should have something to do with streaming, because uh, Ring of Honor needs a deal of some sort. They're actually signing a bunch of wrestlers. They get a lot of wrestlers under contract. They just uh, they just signed their champion, in fact, and uh, they have no television, so we'll have to figure out what they're going to do there. We have new names, new WWE names. That's always fun. Uh, a couple of people have been asked to change their names. Probably more to come. We'll tell you why, what the new names are, neither of which is an improvement. And uh, much, much more. So stick around, everybody. Back in a moment, Wrestling Observer Live. Live, and I don't see Mike Sempervivi anywhere. Where is this guy? And how it goes, everybody? Live radio. Well, we'll send him his uh, friendly. You know how it goes. Every uh, every couple of weeks, we got to send Mike a you know wake up text. It says right here, Semp microphone turned off. Hmm. Huh? Probably will turn that on, won't he? All right. Well, let's uh, let's get going here while we uh, figure this out. He just sent me uh, uh, some profanity, so he's awake. I just don't know where he's at. So, anyway, we'll get going without him. All right, here we go. We got a lot to... Uh, uh, Mike says he can see and hear me. Mike? Can you hear me? Okay, now we can hear you, but where's your uh, video, buddy? I have no idea, dude. Mm. Thanks for unmuting me, though, or whatever it was. All right. Uh, try reconnecting, Jared said. I shall. Man, what an exciting show we have every day for you people. It's Monday. Minutes and minutes of uh, absolutely nothing happening. All right. Well, let's get into uh, the news, and then we'll uh, figure out Mike's video here, or we'll just make him uh, a giraffe again. So tonight's Raw, we've got uh, four things announced for the show, and uh, only two of them are wrestling matches, although... They're both championship matches. We have Sasha Banks and Naomi versus Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan for the women's tag team titles. And obviously, they were going to do this match a week ago, but Rhea Ripley was, and I quote, in protocol. And so she was uh, unable to do the match. She is now out of protocol because she appeared and uh, wrestled, in fact, on SmackDown. So unless somebody else ends up in protocol tonight... The match will actually be taking place. So that's for the women's tag team titles. We have Finn Balor defending the United States Championship match. Tell your friends about this one. Finn Balor will be facing Theory. Because he can't be Austin Theory anymore. He must be Theory. So uh, Finn Balor will be facing Theory for the United States Championship. And then we have Kevin Owens administering a lie detector test on Ezekiel. And then we will have the double wedding of Dana Brooke and Reggie and Tamina and Akira Tozawa. So we've got a double wedding, a lie detector test, and two championship matches. And I believe, Mike, we have once again lost Mike Sempervivi. 
I'm just going to mute everything for now. I'm going to continue on, and we'll figure this out in the next segment. So, as uh, as noted here, uh, Austin Theory is no longer Austin Theory, because what happened was Vince McMahon, 76-year-old Vince McMahon, he woke up one day and he decided, oh, I don't want anyone's names, no real names. And so uh, this, of course, does not apply to everybody. It's, it's, I forget the, the name that Dave used in The Observer, but Randy Orton's not going to wake up tomorrow and get a new name. But if you're, uh, you know, some random person or whatever, uh, this could apply to you. So uh, because Austin Theory's real, his, his real name is not Austin Theory, okay? But his real first name is Austin. So therefore... He can't use his real first name as part of his fake full name. So uh, he can no longer be Austin Theory. He just has to be Theory. Or, you know, they could have given him a new first name. They could have just decided, you know, we'll call him uh, Frank Theory. But they decided, ah, eh, we'll just call him Theory. So uh, that's why Marcel Bartel has a new name. Because apparently that's actually his name is Marcel Bartel. Uh, Walter's real name was Walter, so now he must be uh, Gunther, because that's not his real name. And then uh, we now have the name changes for uh, two NXT wrestlers. Uh, Kaylee Ray is now going to be Alba Fire, F-Y-R-E, Alba Fire. And uh, this one's my favorite. They are changing the name of Casey Catanzaro. Okay, Casey Catanzaro is no longer Casey Catanzaro. She is now Katana Chance. I guess because she takes a lot of chances or something. Katana Chance is the new name of of Casey Catanzaro. And I was thinking about this the other day. And I don't know if you guys know this about Casey Catanzaro, but she was on American Ninja Warrior and she was like, you know, really popular on that show. And they saw her, and they signed her, and they they gave her spots out of American Ninja Warrior. Like, she climbs the ring post to get into the ring. But now they're going to change her name. She's no longer Casey Catanzaro. Because, I mean, when you think about it, it's not like calling her Casey Catanzaro, you're going to do, like, huge business or anything like that. It honestly doesn't matter. Like, you're not going to get new fans because American Ninja Warrior's Casey Catanzaro is in WWE. But it is funny that you go out of your way to hire somebody out of American Ninja Warrior, and then we must change her name. It's like, you know, the Creed Brothers, as we mentioned. You know, they all they do is talk about the accolades of the Creed Brothers... But that's not actually their their names. They they have they have names that they actually got all of those accolades under, and so uh, so there you go. So anyway, she can no longer be Casey Catanzaro. Uh, so all of that, you know, what's the point? She's Katana Chance, and uh, there's going to be probably others that have to change their names as well as a result of this decree, which I'm sure will uh, you know not last forever. Uh, Raquel Gonzalez had to change her name to uh, Raquel Rodriguez because Gonzalez is her actual last name. So all I can think of is that, uh, you know, Vince's, Vince's concern, presumably. Oh, Raul Mendoza also now Cruz del Toro. He's no longer Raul Mendoza. So presumably Vince's concern is that, uh, well, you know, if Austin Theory leaves WWE to go to AEW... He can't be Austin Theory, but he could be Austin. Well, we can't have that. So we have to take away everything from them that is real that they could therefore then use elsewhere. Obviously, if you're a, a Matt Riddle, you know, you're not going to have to change your last name. I don't think. I guess we could, you know, turn on the show tonight. He's got a new name. But uh, that's his new decree for the NXT folks, the folks being called up to the main roster. No real names, not even a real first name and a fake last name or a uh, whatever. So it's Vince. It does. It it honestly doesn't matter. But it is one of those Vince things that I must ridicule on air because it's ridiculous. Are you back now, Mike? I am indeed. All yes. right. We got audio and video from Mike here. 
That is very Vince, by the way. And why did Riddle have to change his uh, first name? Why did they drop that one? Well, uh, the reason that they originally dropped his first name was because uh, they were... And this is another funny one. They didn't want people to Google Matthew Riddle's name and find out that he had had all of those issues with weed in UFC. And so I guess in Vince's brain, because he's 76, well, if we remove his first name, they won't be able to find any information about him. Never mind the fact that if you Google WWE Riddle, his whole name comes up in his Wikipedia and everything about his whole entire life. But that was Vince's, uh, that was his solution to, uh, and then, of course, nowadays, you know, now you may as well give him his name back because now they're they're embracing the whole weed thing. Uh, on SmackDown, uh, grasshoppers. Remember he used to jump in the air and kick his shoes off and, and uh, birds would fly out or whatever? Well, on SmackDown, it was it was grasshoppers. And so they were making all these these comments about grass. Because now it's like a gimmick that they, they're weed smokers. Him and Randy Orton are friends in weed. But uh, before they decided that that was okay, they didn't want people finding about all of this weed. And so they thought the solution was to get rid of his first name. Then we would know and will be able to find out anything about this Matt Riddle. If we just call him Riddle, maybe they'll Google it and find something about Batman. Back after the break, Observer Live. Somebody in the chat during the break noted that uh, I might have my timeline wrong. There was concern that people would uh, find out about Matt Riddle and his weed issues. But I think it actually might have been when he was having his legal issues that they dropped the Matt, Matt part. Because, uh, you know, you drop that Matt and you just can't find any information about the guy. He's, he's a ghost once you drop his, his first name. And this may be a story for another day in the future, but Gable Stevenson keeps his name yeah he's he's gets keep his name for the time being but not his brother his brother has to change his name yeah the brother of gable stevenson has to have a new name i hope they acknowledge he's his brother but that he's got a totally different name and by the way somebody brought up to me this is a great it's a great point by the way Shouldn't Kevin Owens be going all over this company, both, you know, Raw, SmackDown, and NXT, and giving lie detectors to all these people that are having these new names now? Where is he on SmackDown when, uh, you know, Raquel Gonzalez shows up and she got a new name? Isn't that his whole issue with, with, uh, with Ezekiel? No, no, no. It's not about the name. It's about the fact that, that he believes that Ezekiel is Elias and that Elias is not just faking his own name. But, you know, the, these other people, the, the, like Butch, you know, Pat McAfee brings up, you know, he sneaks in there a line about calling him Pete and how he knows these well, guys. That was a mistake. Whereas, well, but, you know, whereas like, you know, it's kind of noted that these people, they are who they are. They just have new names, whereas, you know, Elias is just saying, no, I, I never existed at all. I am Ezekiel. Well, that's only because Ezekiel has stated that he is his own brother. I mean, for all I know, this uh, 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 whatever Marcel Bartel's real name is, Ludwig Kaiser, for all I know, he's saying he's his, he's the brother of Marcel Bartel. We don't know. He's been busy doing promos. Raquel has never explained she was a former NXT champion. She's just showed up with a new name. Maybe she's pretending to be her own sister. Maybe that's going to be like Ezekiel's just the first. And like oh, there's going to no. be a whole bunch of wrestlers that show up and they're actually their own siblings. There's going to be an army of siblings. <laughs> this, is the, this is the worst Lucha Underground remake I've that's ever heard. no dumber than anything else. <laughs> We're going to have uh, Katana Chance show up and say, I'm actually the sister of the famous Casey Catanzaro from American Ninja Warrior. She quit, but I'm her twin, and I'm going to do all of her spots and everything like that. But I got a different name. I, Alba, and oddly enough, a different last name as well. Alba Fire. Alba Fire. Alba Fire. Guys, remember K Kaylee Ray? Alba Fire. Well, she quit. Fire. I'm her sister, Alba Fire. A bunch of sisters and brothers. Going to form that, a faction really is like shaken up in the the name generator and just okay what do we got here alba fire is that a name fire alba alba fire sure why not alba fire maybe it means something to her because i know apparently 
people have input into some of the names that they are going to be called sometimes. Um, so if this means something to her, I apologize for poking fun at it. But Alba Fire? You know, I, I've told this story before, but when I used to write the, uh, I'm breaking kayfabe here, the Frank A. Gotch Flying Mare Wrestling Newsletter for Figure Four Weekly. Some of those uh, around here? There would always be, uh, there would always be, you know, a quote from some rando. And so I had to get these, I had to get a name for the rando. And so, you know, back then, we had phone books. I don't know if you youngsters know what a phone book is. Which, by the way, remind me, I got another story I got to tell you. But anyway, they had a phone book, and you would open the phone book, and it would have, it would have everyone's... You know how they talk about doxing nowadays? Yes. You could just open the phone book and get everyone's phone number and address. Yes. I go to school with, uh, you know, what I actually did, Chris Walla. Oh, I'll just look in the phone book. Oh, there's Chris Walla's name and address and phone number. It's right there in the phone book. Should have called it the dox book. But anyway... So I didn't want to use anyone's actual name. Like, I didn't open the thing and go, oh, you know, here's, uh, you know, Frank Mayer or whatever. Because, you know, he might be a reader. So I would I would get a first name from some person and a random last name from another person. And I would combine those together, and it would come up with the name of the person doing the quote. And uh, it was exactly like these NXT names. It was just, I don't know what it is, but, like, when you hear someone's real name, like Mike Sempervivi... It just seems like that's like a real name, because it is. But for some reason, if I took your first name and Jim Valley's last name, and I said, debuting tonight, Mike Valley, that just sounds weird. <laughs> or, hey, you know who's going to show up tonight? Jim Sempervivi. You're like, who is, what a stupid name. <laughs> but anyway, that's, all these names are just, they don't roll off the tongue. They just sound weird. Alba That's the Fire, problem. Yeah. Katana Chance. And even, Brian, look, even in, in the Flying Mare and in the Onion, which would be another great use of, of doing something like that with the fake quotes with somebody's name attached to them, they sound like real names. And, and I know there's a lot of wacky names out there. There's a lot of unique and different names and, and, and names rooted in culture that you know, I, I'm not familiar with. So there's a lot of names out there that are, you know, like, but like with WWE, they either they come across so generic, like Isis Nile. I thought like, that's kind of a cool name. Ivy. But then you look at Ivy Nile. I'm sorry. Like, I thought that was kind of a cool name. But then it's like Alba Fire. I don't know how great that sounds. Katana Chant sounds like a, somebody out of a video game. And it's like it doesn't. I don't know. It just doesn't ever really serve to kind of fit with WWE. I mean, the, the Butch thing, because of the character he's playing, makes sense. It's just, why did you have to rename him Butch? Why couldn't he be? I don't know. But then again, we've been. this has been a WWE slash F thing since 1983, since, you know, forever. You know, actually, even before that, look, people would go to work for Vince McMahon's father, and he would change their names. Hulk Hogan, he was not Terry Boulder. We wanted a Irish guy, so it ended up being, you know, Hulk Hogan. So this is, again, this is what they do. It's in their DNA to do. It's just come a cup with some better names that kind of fit and, yeah, roll off the tongue and seem a little more marketable, I guess. I'll get back to the news in a second, but I just got to tell the story real quick. So the other day, we're in California, and uh, we we went to uh, the Monterey Bay Aquarium. And then we went to eat, and there was just this little hole-in-the-wall place called American Burger. That's what it was called. Okay, and uh, everybody that worked there was Mexican, and uh, they played problem. Mexican music. It was like the weirdest thing, <laughs> but they only... And then uh, well, God bless America. Paisley Good. wanted uh, chicken nuggets, <laughs> and they were the exact same ones that we get from Costco, the Dino Nuggies. Exactly the same. <laughs> so anyway, I like the place. But it's called American Burger. And so, <laughs> so <simple. laughs> on all of the walls, there's like, you know, here's the Beatles, and uh, here's some, you know, records and whatever like that. And they got some <laughs> antique stuff in there. And I said... Uh, Paisley, when you're done eating, I'm going to go show you what some of this stuff is. I'm going to explain. I was going to explain to her what like a record was and everything like that, because she just all she knows is, oh, I want to listen to Coca Melon. Just play it on your phone. <laughs> she doesn't know, know what life was like, you know, back in the day. So we're looking around and and uh, and there's a there's an old TV, a cathode ray TV, the big square TV, and uh, I said, you know, that is right. And she looks at it and she goes. 
an oven. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> she goes, it's an oven. It's like a microwave oven. <laughs> a television. What? She had no idea what a television was, an old school television. I video. I took a video of it because it was just so preposterous. I should put it on the internet. An oven. My God, I am Dude, so I mean... old. I didn't even bother explaining the record after that. You don't even know what a television is, kid. I can't like, explain a record. And she's she's young. A, uh, Avery, we a couple years ago went to the Mayflower Hotel in D.C. and they have a lot of nice, really nice sitting areas in there. And in one part of it, I took a picture because it's Avery on his phone, on his iPhone. Looking over at a rotary phone, just completely baffled. Just baffled. Knew it was a phone. Just like, okay, what do you do here? Why are these letters? On? What, what is going on here? And just had no clue on how to work it. Showed him. It was like, yeah, okay, well, that makes sense now. But it's like, so let me get this straight. You would click it and it would make that. Yes. Yes. And then his grandmother told him about the, you know, back in the day of KLM dash, that was a phone number of four, five, seven. And yeah, that really blew his mind. Yeah, we're old, Brian. This is what's going on here. Sodnam singed in an interview and he said that he chose to sign with AEW over WWE in order to make history for Indian wrestlers in the promotion. He said, I had given trials for WWE as well, and I liked it very much as well, and I liked AEW as well. AEW is brand new. It's only been a couple of years, right? And it's really fire. I thought that if I go to AEW, I would be the first again. First wrestler from India. I will make another history for India in AEW. He said it would be amazing to go to WWE, but they already have Indian people over there. They have Indian wrestlers. Why don't I go start where there are no Indian guys and create history again after reaching there? So anyway, that's why he chose to go there. And uh, I talked about this on the Brian and Vinny show and Observer Radio last night. I know everyone hated his debut and the lights out and the fans are baffled. And, you know, we had the people going, oh, it was the worst thing, in a, which it wasn't. It wasn't good. Don't get me wrong. But uh, it wasn't the worst thing. Now, with that said, on the Battle of the Belt show, after the Jonathan Gresham match, uh, Satnam Singh showed up, and he went down to the ring, and he beat up Gresham, and he beat up the boys, and I thought the guy, I was impressed. Not like he was, he was you know, the bar is low. I just saw Omos have a horrible match at WrestleMania and everything like that. But, I mean, everything he did... It looked good. Nothing looked bad. He didn't have to sell, which is like the big thing that these giants have a problem with. But like he looked, you know, dominating and he had charisma and he had a personality. And I thought it was like a, a great little segment there. So I don't know what everyone else thought, but I was very impressed with Satnam Singh. Back in a moment, Observer Life. Uh, this person here makes a good point. He that? says, in WWE, the names feel like two first names or two last names. So it'd be like Mike Bryan, Semper Vivi Alvarez. That's actually a good one. That's or a, Proper Verhai. That's, that's a lot of Latin in there for that Semper Vivi Alvarez. But, you know, yeah, that, yes. Way too often is that the case when there's guys down there. What are the, what is it? I mean, but it's like, they're so generic. It's like Josh Briggs and what's the other guy's name? Jensen? Whatever uh, it oh, is. Brig, Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen. Yeah. Impossible. Or Except for one guy can't get a... So I remember well, Brooks know. Jensen. That's how I remember. Von Wagner. Like, oh, I like Von Wagner. Don't know that one. That's a good what? one. Okay, that see, there's, I like that one. There's one I don't understand at all. Von Wagner. Von I don't Wagner. Is he Dutch? <laughs> yeah, come on. Is he Dutch? I mean, is I it know. like I don't know. I just Fallon Henley. Yep, that's I a mean, good one too. Fallon Henley. Look, that sounds more like a different line of business to me. I don't know. I, this comes, and I know you hate this. I know we've done this before. Is that a WrestleMania main event name? Tatum Brian? Paxley. Can you see Tatum Paxley against Fallon Henley in the main event at WrestleMania? I actually it's possible, could. I guess. Maybe. This person here notes, mm -hmm. they renamed Casey to Katana Chance because of the American Ninja Warrior gimmick. Katana is a weapon used by ninjas. That's true, actually. Classic. Wasn't uh, we're going to acknowledge we're going to acknowledge her American Ninja Warrior past, 
but not actually let her use the name she used on American Ninja Warrior. Why don't they just put her under a mask in a full body suit and call her the Ninja Warrior or something? I guess you could, but yeah, they probably can't trademark Ninja Warrior. For I don't know. Reasons. I guess if you're going to give somebody like, you know, the name, I don't know. That's one of those like, I don't know, Katana Sword. If she was in an outfit or something like that, it's like, you know, Ninja Mac. Like, you know, it's not the same when he takes the mask off and it's just him. But when he's in the mask, he's got the whole all the gear on and everything. He looks like a Ninja Mac. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's another one of those names where it's like Katana Sword. It, at least make it video game-esque or something like that. I don't know. All right, here's an interview with Triple H from The Athletic talking about uh, NXT. He says that the after transitioning NXT from the WWE Network to the USA Network, the pandemic changed their focus in working in front of no fans and hurt both the recruitment and training of talent for nearly two years. Then we said, said Hunter, all right, let's reboot it and go back to what we originally were. Some of these people won't be ready for television, but we're going to put them on television. We believe the audience is invested enough that the numbers might come down, but a core group of them will stay, and now we're creating fresh stars all the time. That's where we are now. The numbers have stabilized. He said the shift towards 2.0 and more churn on the roster was something they were already talking about, but that it happened to take place at a period of time where I had to leave for a bit, he said. Build your own. Versus recruit from the indies. Levesque said over time, you realize the NFL parts ways with up to 500 players a year, which helps contribute to a larger pool of athletes from which they can recruit versus a smaller pool of India talent where, quote, you've almost got to be someone with nothing else going on or you can't take no for an answer and dig, dig, dig. If you take that athlete pool and 10 or 5% have big personalities that would be good for the business, you're talking about a talent pool that's a thousand times bigger than right now. <laughs> he admitted there were going to be some cases where they will miss and realize they were wrong in not signing certain talent. But, quote, at some point, you'll want to be a part of the biggest promotion in the world, and you'll come back here. Mm. Levesque said their numbers of trainees force them to have more regimented uh, into whether they have a future in WWE. In the past, he said they would give new talent more time to figure things out, but in the current day, they will have a better gauge after six months on whether recruits will have an aptitude for pro wrestling. Where do you want to start picking this one apart? Uh, let me or does it continue on? Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, more. They will have a better gauge after six months about whether recruits will have an aptitude for pro six months uh. former nxt stars making it elsewhere levec said he likes that former nxt talent have made it big elsewhere and are happy for them equating it to when players leave football teams and move to other teams i like to think they came into us here we taught them a lot got them to a higher level where they learn how to do television how to be professionals and all of that to be successful there at some point they might come back with us or they might never because they don't fit our brand as well and that is okay he said he welcomes competition, saying it's great and makes everybody sharper. You get lazy if you're all there and everybody goes about their business. At the end of the day, it'll make us better. We'll all be better for it. All these things have forced us to be in a better place right now. Now, not that we wouldn't have gotten there anyway, but we have done it quicker in some manner. There's room for everybody to do it. This is talking about competition. It's like saying the USFL or XFL is starting up and the NFL is panicking about market share, just going to increase people's love for football. If you love football that much, you'll watch all of the football. It's great. But the NFL is not sweating that. So really the only thing, I don't want to sit here and just like talk about all of this, but he did have one line which he just totally glossed over. He said, it says here, the pandemic changed their folks in working in front of no fans, hurt both the recruitment and training of talent for nearly two years. Then we said, okay, let's reboot it and go back to what we originally were. And then he moves on. Mm -hmm. Well, why did you make that decision? <laughs> the answer to why they made that decision, by the way, is because, uh, I mean, it's there's a lot of reasons, but, I mean, Vince just doesn't get it. He does not get the modern style of professional wrestling. He doesn't get being small. He doesn't get doing high spots. He doesn't get indie, modern. He doesn't get any of that. He knows what he knows. And what he knows is big, good-looking guys, hot women, 
colors, no clothes. Yeah, it's what he knows. And so, I mean, do you guys remember NXT from like 2016 to 2019? Dude, it was awesome. All people talked about was his best thing in wrestling was better than anything on the main roster. But he didn't like all that. He didn't like these guys. He didn't get it. He would The guys that were successful on the main roster were like, you know, tall, good looking. I mean, it was so, I mean, that's what happened. None of that's mentioned here. Just the generic line. Then we said, okay, let's reboot it and go back to what we originally were. And here we are. Let's just, we'll get a whole bunch of, of good looking athletes. And, uh, you know, in six months, we'll know whether they can be good wrestlers or not. We'll fire everybody else and we'll just keep hiring more because, damn it, we can teach anybody to do this. That's what that's where we are right now. And for those of you that don't understand why we watch NXT 2.0 every week, I mean, this is the biggest story for the future of wrestling. We've got two companies, okay? One company is all about we want good wrestlers. We want people who can do this job well. And we're going to try to build a pro wrestling promotion around it. And then we've got the other company that's like, it doesn't matter if you can wrestle or not. It doesn't matter if you've ever done this. We can make anybody, we can take anybody and make them, you know, not all of them, obviously, but we can take 100 people and 10 of them will have charisma and some athletic ability. And in six months, you know, we can have them far enough along that, you know, they can go on, on television and, you know, eventually be WrestleMania main eventers. This is a gigantic story. This is not just, oh, I don't like NXT and the show's dumb. And this. No, this is the entire future of this business. At two completely opposing viewpoints. I mean, maybe there's room in this world for, you know, two major pro wrestling promotions that do things entirely differently. Maybe one will win out. I guess we'll wait and see. I think Sanity's going to win out. Because you can only do this for so long before you realize that of the hundred sheep that you got to teach to jump the fence, when 99 of them can't do it, and you do have that one that makes it over and you're happy about them, but then you see out in that field, all those people that for some reason, you don't like the color of that one, you don't like the the, the height of that one, you don't like the age of that one, but but all those people are 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 fence jumpers they they can all make it over they're all good at what they do but you don't want to put in the time to like you know make them stars what they were doing on nxt was just fine the problem was once they got to the main roster and maybe vince and a lot of other people didn't like hearing that you know you're not using these guys right why are you mis why are you changing their names why are you trying to change what they are you know why is it the the people who you released fault that you couldn't make any of them stars. You know, Finn Balor was a star for years. He was in NXT. He was a star. He comes into the main roster and yeah, injuries. There was that. He was the first Universal Champion. There were some you know things that happened that didn't work out perfectly. But then, you know, Damian Priest was an untouched commodity. Damian Priest had been around the Indies forever. Went to NXT, an older guy. Nobody knows how old Damian Priest really is. You know he's he's older than some of those dudes, like in Austin Theory, but he hit it really well. You didn't know this guy was pushing 40 unless I told you he was pushing 40. And he was a star, and he goes to NXT, and he was a star there. He comes up to the main roster, and what happens? He remains relatively untouched, and when they really figure out something for him to do, it's a complete mess. He looks like a goof, and it hasn't worked. And we'll see what happens here with Edge, but I don't have a whole lot of faith right now. That's not the talent's fault. That's you guys' fault. And but taking a Tiffany Stratton or somebody ice cold off the street, teaching them how to work and bring them up to the main roster isn't going to fix that. It's not going to fix that unless you actually realize that you need more than just one star in Roman Reigns and understand that you need to keep building some more. They wait for somebody to trip over and fall into their lap like a Brock Lesnar or, like, or Roman Reigns or somebody like that that they can build up and call themselves theirs as the one example of look what we did see this is how we made it work when really it's the athlete that's more special than anything frankly that they're teaching them by the way there's other stuff that i'm not going to even get into here on the air but there's uh, so much in that thing if you wanted to it's just it's I, frustrating i'll, it's I'll just read this uh this text message and then uh 
And I'm sure some of you can put two to two together. Brian, what is up with the Hulu version of NXT not having Nikita Lyons? The last two episodes didn't have her on it at all. Uh, this person here says, wait until they change Tommaso Ciampa's name to Tommy Carl. <laughs> Actually, he has he's a, I, I mean, I guess he's still got his, his last name. Uh, that's what they that's what they will do. They wouldn't get rid of they'll get rid of Tommaso first. So just be Ciampa, all big letters. That's it. This person here likes uh, Count Von Wagner related to <laughs> Count Marquis Von Kor. Remember that guy? Was it? Marquise Von Kor? Yeah, yeah I liked him in TNA. Uh, um, the cat, or the, the pounds. Who was that? Monty Brown. Monty right? Brown, yeah. Yeah, I liked him. ECW even didn't do a whole lot for really anybody. Talk about a bunch of name changes that didn't quite work out, according to Blan. What are the odds that uh, R-Truth messes up the wedding like he messes up town names and the wrong people get married? That's actually an awesome idea. That actually would be great. I don't know look? how the follow-up would be, but if he accidentally married the wrong people to each other, Bro, I I like, is... I'm going to be very disappointed now if they don't do that. <laughs> I know this is an old story, but that whole thing where he screwed up the name of Green Bay or Milwaukee, wasn't he just goofing on the Snickers commercial and then everybody actually No, he fought? actually made a mistake. He really did make yes. a mistake. One mistake in his lifetime, and now that's the rest of his life. They, why didn't they build that into the Snickers commercial then? I guess maybe they didn't have that sponsorship back in the day. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Hey, Dom, plug that cookie place that we had this weekend. Or this, yeah, oh, know, Insomnia was. Cookies. Was that was that awesome or what? Dude, they're amazing. Ever since I found out there's one like 10 minutes away from here, uh, my waistline has not treated me well. Well, yeah, I went to uh, Byline on Friday. And Dom got cookies for me and the youngsters. It was great. Dom, are you going to send me a care package or what? No, of course not. Not after that break. Hey, Dom, how about that picture we took together where I was a little bit behind you and to the side, and so your head looked like a buffalo head? I guess maybe I just got a small head. Yeah, it was not my most flattering. It was a better photo than the one we took in Seattle, though. I will say that. I don't remember that one. Did I? You post know how that happy one? that makes Brian to let to know that he somehow centered you up and blocked you in a photograph to make you look like you had a buffalo head. He took head the make photo, you idiot! I was just there. Mm -hmm. Don't yell at me. <laughs> Mike likes to blame everything on me, Dom. But as you're well aware, it's never my fault. Yeah, <laughs> no, not not at all. No, gorgeous Jimmy Garvin. It's never your fault. It's never my fault. Mm. Hey, later today we're going to interview, uh, not interview, he's a co-host, Filthy Tom Lawler. That'll be at... Uh, <laughs> he's your champion! Two Pacific, for now. Two Pacific, five Jesus. Eastern. Filthy Tom Lawler is going to be on learn? the show. Talk about SmackDown and some of the New Japan show from this weekend. I'll watch as much as I can. And I think Tom watched a bunch of the uh, Stardom Cinderella tournament as well. So we'll get into that. But yeah, that's coming up this, uh, this afternoon, everybody. Two Pacific, five Eastern... Twitch, actually, no, YouTube. Top tier YouTube subscribers can watch it live. Everybody else can uh, listen at WrestlingObserver.com. Check out my cameo, F4W Online. Boy, I was killing them cameos this weekend. And I got plenty of time for more. And that's it, everybody. Thanks, Mike, as always, callers and listeners. Dom and the Cookies. Talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.